Hi, this is Patrick and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Here is another one of our CES videos. This time we take a tour of Magna. Let's go. Well, if you're an EV driver, I'm sure you sort of figure out what, you can figure out what this is. Uh, but this is really cool. This is like the next generation that you guys are working on now. So you want to tell us all the, the goodies about this? Absolutely, yeah, I can give you the run through here. So this is Magna's next generation E-Drive. Uh, we're really proud of what we have to show here today. Uh, we've taken all that we've learned with our current production E-Drives and all of our prototype development and have worked to get this to the next level. Uh, so what you see here is an 800 volt, 250 kilowatt E-Drive. Uh, we're running about 93% efficiency on real nice. world driving cycles. So that's a big benefit to our yeah. customers for battery sizing. Uh, a couple of key features that allowed us to, to really get to this point, obviously 800 volts going there is a big right. help for efficiency and the, you know, lowering some currents, helping out with some thermal options. A few quick mechanical advantages that we've got here. This unit is actually available to rotate 90 degrees about the drive axis of the vehicle. That allows us a lot of integration flexibility for our customers. So uh, a lot of rear applications, they want this really flat kind of low right. application for the rears and something that's a little more tall and skinny for the front application. So you can have a shorter front end because yeah. you have that space that you can use. Yeah, so people have the frunks up there and they also have a lot of accessory drives for you know the HVAC, right. all the battery cooling and E-drive cooling and things. And then in the back, you keep it low for your, yeah. your cargo passengers. Yeah. And all Spare that tires, stuff. some of those applications. Right. And uh, it also has an added benefit to help with some validation costs. If you have multiple different E-drives, they have to go through this extensive validation process. This allows us to potentially use the same E-drive with some small mounting changes and really reduce some of those integration or validation efforts that for our customers could save them a lot of money in that upfront cost uh, and that's with no hardware changes right so no pump changes all the lubrication still works and functions properly zero to 90 degrees of rotation which awesome. is pretty cool uh, another cool mechanical function here is our active fluid control so this is an electric pump which is pretty industry mm -hmm. standard on e-drives now but where the secret sauce is we have a special manifold here that allows us to rotate the motor in two different directions if we rotate it in one direction, we're able to cool certain portions of the E-Drive that need it underneath these different use cases. Spin it in the other direction, that oil can flow to different areas that require cooling. Why that's important is really uh, electric motors need to be cooled differently, low speed, high torque versus high speed, high power, Autobahn right. driving. So we can cool the winding heads, the magnets independently, or shut the system off for higher efficiency if we need to. Uh, onto the real good stuff here, why this is better is in the power electronics and the motor. Mm -hmm. So the motor here, uh, we've developed a lot of stamping technology and assembly methods in-house. Uh, we've gained some sustainability by reducing the heavy rare earth content from our current production by about 50%. Nice. And that's really through optimization, some of the benefits of 800 volts, and a lot of our controls implementation that we've learned over the years. Uh, also, uh, some of the stamping innovations help us to be more sustainable in recycling our system. So we have some kind of unique tab structures that allow the magnets to be removed at end of life and help to recycle these e-machines, which has been a big problem in some of the existing yeah. EVs. Because currently, like if you want to re reuse the magnets, you have to go through a whole big process of like melting things down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's that's hard to get them out. like just to be able to get them out is all of a sudden a huge yeah, uh, proposition. Yeah, it's very, very easy in this application. Uh, but really the big advantages here, which is why we get the power density and the efficiency bumps is in the power electronics. So this is a new to market, high voltage embedded silicon carbide uh, power module. So there's only a few companies in the world that have shown they can do this today. And what we're doing is placing some of the power electronics directly onto the PCB. And that helps us to increase efficiency by eliminating switching losses or reducing them greatly. Uh, and uh, helping with some of the thermal requirements there too. Less layers of cooling to go through, less resistance. Right. We can cool the system better. We have less connections and complexity. Still a lot of flexibility for current levels or uh, different applications for the vehicle, but all in all a significant energy bump or efficiency bump, I'm sorry, by switching to that embedded technology. Really That's really great. awesome. So uh, this looks big here, sit down here, but this is actually a compact design compared to competitors. Absolutely. This is an industry leading uh, power density and torque density. Uh, the unit, as is shown here in the real metal version, uh, is actually only 75 kilograms, which is pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Yeah, so 250 kilowatts in this package. Uh, you're not seeing it very often in this show, at least. So we're really and this proud is 
coming to market, can you say like when or yeah, when so it this might... is now not with a customer currently, right? We've finished our advanced engineering process here, uh, done all of our homework, all of our testing on the bench and demo vehicles and things. And now the next steps is to sell that to a customer. Time frame for that, uh, we'll be ready for SOP 2026 and onwards. Oh, that's uh, very cool. Maybe even a bit sooner. If yeah. the right, right situation comes up. And as with a lot of Magna things, like we may never know who it's actually in for the most part because. Yeah. You know, some of these manufacturers, they buy it and they're just like, it's ours. Yeah, you see so, the rebranding. Yeah, but hey, we're, we're all right like, with being quiet behind the scenes and yeah. providing the good technology. It's a win-win. They, yeah. they, they get to sell their car, you get yeah. to sell your e-drive. So. Yeah, and we've really started to uh, to utilize our partners and joint ventures with uh, LG Magna. You may have heard that JV established yes. a little over a year ago. Uh, we've had some really close collaboration with them on the motor, the power electronics and things, and it's a, a really viable relationship here. Well, it's really exciting to see uh, integrated, tightly uh, uh, configured package, 800 volt. So I know all this is going to be coming, and we'll we'll do our sleuthing and see where we can see it actually on the street. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And I didn't introduce you at the beginning, but yeah. uh, you're Ryan, and what's your role at yeah. Uh, Magna? Yeah, my name is Ryan Shaw. I'm a manager of advanced engineering in uh, North America. So. Uh, I manage a small team that's working on developing next generation e-drives. So, awesome. Yeah, very close to this. Yeah, very good. Very cool. Well, thank you for your time and we're going to move on to the next part. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, we're going to talk to Miguel about battery enclosures. I know you don't see this technology in cars, but this is something, of course, very important for EVs. And what is what is special about your battery enclosures? Yeah, so battery enclosure is one of the most important, uh, let's say, components in the EV vehicles today. So it as is. you said, we don't see them. They just sit on the bottom of the vehicle. It's basically almost near impossible to see what's going inside. Right. But basically, here we have all the battery assemblies. We have all the electronics as well that goes inside. And what these uh, assemblies provide us is the protection for the batteries. Right. So a few things that happens here is we need to protect these ones for crash impact. Right. So that's why you see is there are like a pretty strong components, right? You have a lot of material because you need to protect the batteries. Right. You don't want to have any contact or deformation that will crush the batteries and create any potential concern for right. customers. Next thing is that this requires to be leak tight as well. Right. So some what is important of the leak tightness is because we need to protect the batteries for water intrusion. These components are exposed to the ambient. So basically are under the vehicle. So you will have rocks coming to, you will have water coming to. So you need to right. have a very leak tight assembly. So if you don't have that one, again, you can have a failure mode where the battery could fail, right? Right. That's why these ones are pretty important. And we have different solutions. In this case, this is aluminum solution. That is, if you're looking to have some light weighting, you can go to aluminum. Right. That's the best way to go always. The disadvantage is that you will increase the cost of the assembly because aluminum is more expensive than, than the steel. Right. But this is a very good solution for lightweight, but also to absorb energy. If we go to the other ones that are the steel concepts, <clears throat> this one is a good advantage of the steel because you can have a better cost. Also, you can provide a good protection. And the other thing that is very important with the steel is that you can have several grades of, uh, of materials. So right. it's not just only a piece of metal, right? It's different materials with different properties that help you to protect the batteries as well. So cross members have like a high strength steels. Right. Those ones will not deform during the crash. So it's very important how we design these battery frames along with the, with the vehicle, just to absorb the energy before to have a contact to the batteries. And finally, um, what we are looking into the future. So how we improve these concepts, right? I, I told you that we have leak tightness requirements for these joints. Right. So a way that we will improve that one is that like we are developing a process that is going to help us to have almost rectangular shape with a single component. So right. using the knowledge that we have for stampings, what we are doing is we are developing the process that once we have one concept, one sorry, one uh, part, you will avoid all of these joints. And with that said, you eliminate that failure mode for leak tightness, right? Right. You don't have any water. So you can see on the screen, there is a, a bottom uh, portion and it's going to come uh, later in the in the, uh, in the video. video. But basically that helps us to eliminate that portion of the different uh, uh, parts that goes, join it and then eliminate the failure mode. And finally, what we have is a concept where we are increasing the integration of the battery frame and the vehicle. So first, let me just go back to the battery enclosure. So that's just a single stamping on the bottom that you will see there, that one. 
it's almost rectangular. One, one step, yeah. So the process that we develop is helping us to have the same, let's say, concept than this one with one con with one part. And when we go to the integration process, we have all those integrated uh, um, rails for the seats. Yeah. Two functions that we have. First is integrate the battery frame along with the seat structure that you mm -hmm. already saw before. That one helps us to have like a, a better design of the vehicle. So right now we need to reinvent the vehicle again, right? Because we are just adjusting the vehicles to the internal right. combustion to the electric ones and we are just adding content and weight. With this integration solution, we can, let's say, re remove the redundancy and then improve the weight of the vehicle. At the end, weight is going to be translated to better mileage for your car. And, and it makes a lot of sense because like right now it looks, I think, from my knowledge, it's like you're going to have your the top of your battery, then you can put the floor of the car, but you're sort of integrating it together. So you're saving weight, but you're also saving a little bit of height. Like you can get exactly. It. And that, that height can be used for two ways, right? Like a, you can increase the height of your batteries, then you increase right. the energy. Or right. you can use to, pr to put some uh, structure to absorb energy for crash. Because at the end, that the most sense. important thing is we need to protect occupants. Right. Then the batteries as well, right? right? And then so. you can put the, the chairs in and swivel and all that other yeah. fun stuff. That's, safety first. That's the next step, right? So once you go to that area, when you just put all those uh, new type of seats and when you can reconfigure, you are talking about like a, a more comfortable cabin, right? That sounds that's awesome. That's the next step. And we as a company, what we are showing is what we can do when we basically collaborate together. Right. So I would just do a structure, my, colleague, my colleagues do the seatings, right? Yeah. If we just work together, we can bring the solutions that will provide a better solution for the vehicle. So, and to go back, you know, I think one of the things that's exciting is like, this is a component that we never see, that we never think about exactly. as a consumer, but it's actually integral to the whole vehicle. Yes. This part is not only protecting batteries, it's also helping you with the stiffness of your of your vehicle. So that means how your your vehicle is going to, right. to going to handle, right? Handle, feel. Drive and handling. That feeling is also this is this is very important for this component. And then the other one is the crash, right? How you handle the crash right. event. So you have side fall, you have a, a side crash, front, rear. So these components are basically used to absorb energy and to protect everything. So it's part integral of the body in white. As you said, cool. it's not seen there but it's yeah, very exactly. important. Behind the scenes. Correct. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to move really on welcome. to the next station. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. All right. Okay, now we're here with Steve. He's going to show us this section here in Magna. All right. This is our third generation of reconfigurable seats. Uh, the focus here is to try to provide the passenger with more options and right. also to address cargo issues. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So let me demonstrate a couple of the modes that this vehicle, that this seating can, can do here, okay? This is what we call our, our cargo mode. The seats, the cushions, they come up and all the seats go back. Oh, nice. Okay, so hey, if you wanna have your dog up front as your passenger, there's a space here, all right? That's very cool. All controlled by an app. If you wanna have more cargo space, whereby for for instance we go grocery shopping or you have construction materials you need or 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 um, a big team big screen tv you can move all the seats forward and create all the space for you that's excellent yeah now i notice it looks like there's an ev battery under here so is this the whole goal is to be able to put this type of system even if there's a battery underneath yes so the beauty of Magna is that we have seven different divisions. I work in the seating division. There's another division that makes battery tray covers for electric vehicles. What this is, is a collaboration of our division that makes electric vehicle battery covers and seating. And what it does here is that the top of the battery, battery tray cover is rigid and can be used as a load floor for a vehicle. So the vehicle manufacturer not, does not have to use, the, the, there's no load floor. The top of the battery cover is the load floor. Perfect. All right. Um, let me say one, let me show you one other thing. This is what we call our campfire mode, where for ride sharing, right. it allows passengers to, to look at each other. You know, it allows for a social setting. And uh, oh. the seat swivels 180 degrees. 
This, this is like the old Southwest Airlines configuration. If you guys don't know what that is, we'll pop that up. That's really cool. And then like if you're just like camping or something like that, you could literally just sit here and yeah. Have or a if you're or if you're charging your battery. Oh uh, yeah. You no, know, and you want to have a That's actually a good point cuz I could see having like a, you know, like a little table that I could put here. Yeah. We could each have our meal and wait for the car to finish. Yeah. Or if you have an infant here that you want to address. Yeah. It's another another application of this technology. Very cool. But the main thing is just flexibility and changing the configuration without manually moving yeah, and pushing yeah. your Inside the vehicle cabin, uh, we use three technologies. This is what they call long rail. And I'm right. telling you, you will see this very soon in the industry in North America. Very there's cool. a swivel, a mechanism down there that swivels in seat 180 degrees. And as you can see, there's a, a, there's a mechanism that takes the cushion, moves it up, we call it right. stadium cushion, that allows it to swivel. Because you imagine trying to swivel the seat 180, it hits yeah, the Yeah, you're gonna run into stuff, yeah, right. Yeah. Awesome, well thank you so much, this is exciting. Um, do we know any particular, uh, I know you can't say which yeah. OEMs, but do we know, uh, Maybe what what time frame we may be looking at? Uh, you know what? I'll I'll refrain from that. I'll just say that it's coming soon, and coming I think soon. it's a very exciting product. Awesome. Me too. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank you for watching our Magna Booth tour at CES. Check out all of our CES videos. We have a playlist with all of them listed below. And just remember, whatever you drive or whoever builds it, enjoy the ride. Bye.